Hello friends and welcome to my channel. So friends, today I'm going to be running stable diffusion in a very low end computer and I'm going to find out what are the options that you can select that will make your generations faster when you're using a very low end computer or a laptop like I am doing right now. So right now I'm running stable diffusion in my laptop, which is an eight generation Core i7 mobile laptop chip. And it only has a 1050 Ti with four GB of VRAM. So the configuration is very low considering the kind of hotspot that today's computers have. Most of you are probably using a 3070 or a 3080. But I know that a lot of you are using a very low end computer with a low end GPU like 1050 Ti with only 4 GB of RAM. So I'm going to take you through some of the things that I do in order to make my generations faster. Now I run my automatic 1111 through this launcher, uh, which I have already made a video on how you can install it on your own computers. And this launcher makes a lot of things easy. For example, you can use it to automatically update your UI. You can also use it to automatically update your extension. As you can see, the options are there. And on top of that, it allows you to add some launch options. For example, you can see there is a low VRAM option. So if you're running a laptop or a computer which has less than 8 GB or a 4 GB VRAM like me, you can actually uh, make some changes here and you can also enable Xformers from here. You can change your checkpoint folder and you can change your VAE from this interface. So it makes a lot of things easy. And you can also add some options through this interface. So it is highly recommended that if you're using automatic 1111 or if you want to install automatic 1111, then install it via this interface. It will take care of everything for you and it's a one click install for everything. You don't have to worry about installing Git. You don't have to worry about installing Python. This installer will take care of everything and it's going to help me to do today's video. So anyway, let's start my video. Now I'm going to run automatic 1111 without using any of the options here or any of the optimizations that are available. And I'm going to see how long it takes for each generation. Then I'm going to come back here and change these options or add these optimizations and we'll see what kind of generations do we get. So let's just start automatic 1111 and let's make a very simple generation. Okay, so I'm inside my automatic 1111. I have a checkpoint already loaded. So I'm simply going to write a very simple prompt and I'm going to generate without changing anything except for the seed because for this experiment, we want to have a constant seed number. So let's uh, input a seed number of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's a random seed that I just came up with. I don't know what it does. I don't know if it's going to impact anything. I'm going to keep it like that in all of the generations that I do. And I'm going to also keep the prompt same in all the generations that I do. So my generation, so my prompt is Royal Queen and I'm just going to generate. Now I'm going to generate it twice because Usually it takes a bit longer in the first generation right after you start off automatic 1111 because automatic 1111 needs to put some things in the memory in the RAM and then start the generation. So we are going to disregard the first generation and we're only going to take the time of the second generation. So guys, uh, this is the second time I've generated the same image and it took us only 32.22 seconds. Now I'm going to generate the same image, but this time I'm going to do 768 by 768. So friends, I have not generated the image. So as you can see, although my prompt is same and my seed is also same, but because it's a different resolution, 768 by 768, Stable Journey created a different image. So even if your seed is same and if your prompt is same, if you change your resolution, you're going to get a different image. So let's see how long did it take. So it took so it took one minute, 28.39 seconds. So it took significantly longer, of course, because it's a higher resolution image. And now I'm going to try the same prompt and the same seed, but I'm going to try a 1024 by 1024 resolution generation. So friends, as it turns out, stable diffusion could not give me an image at 1024 by 1024 with the 4 GB VRAM that I have. It came very close, it came to 95%, but in the end, it could not complete the work because CUDA ran out of memory. So it's telling us that CUDA out of memory, which, which means that with only 4 GB of RAM, it is not possible to generate a 1024 by 1024 image. So what can we do? So we are going to use the first of our optimizations so that we can generate the image at 1024 and generate it faster. 
So what we need to do is we need to enable transformers so that VRAM allocation can be optimized and stable diffusion can run faster or generate the images at higher resolution. So you can find out the various optimizations in this page, in this GitHub page by Automatic 1111. What are the different uh, kinds of uh, optimizations that are available? I'm going to use this one. I'm going to use dash dash med VRAM. So dash dash med VRAM actually optimizes uh, stable diffusion by splitting the VRAM usage in two parts and only uh, using generation data in the VRAM and using the regular RAM or the CPU RAM for the other parts. The description is actually written here. You can read it here about how it does and how it actually uh, optimizes the use of VRAM. But the idea is that if you use this optimization while starting stable diffusion in automatic 1111, you can work better in a low end CPU. So how will you use this optimization? So if you are like me who is using this launcher, you can use this optimization by simply clicking in this box and enable X formers by using this box. So what this will do is it will automatically add these optimizations while starting automatic 1111. But if you are not using these, that is if you are not using this launcher, then you have to manually do it and I'll show you how you can manually do it. You have to go to your automatic 1111 installation. For example, for me, the installation is here and then you need to go to web UI user and open it using your notepad. So I'm going to use my notepad plus plus. It's a very good app. I think you should all install this. It makes tinkering with code much easier. So over here in this command line argument, all you need to do is you need to uh, copy this and paste this and this will automatically uh, run this optimization every time you start automatic 1111. So let's start automatic 1111 with this optimization and also let's enable Xformers. If you're not using the launcher, then you can enable Xformers the same way. You copy it from here and then uh, you just uh, go here and add a space and add this over here and Xformers will be enabled the next time you run automatic 1111. So now let's run automatic 1111 with these two uh, optimizations and let's see what kind of result we get. Okay friends, so now we are running automatic 1111 using these optimizations and let's try to generate the image which A1111 failed to generate when these optimizations were not in use. So let's try to generate this image again. So we're going to generate Royal Queen at 1024 by 1024 and our seed is still the same now it's going to take some time because it's a very high resolution okay friends so i can see that this time uh automatic 1111 was actually able to complete the generation which it actually failed the last time because it ran out of memory but this time it was able to create the 1024 by 1024 image and for that it took something like three minutes and 54 seconds now this was my first run so i think it took longer but if i try to generate this again i think it will be a bit uh, shorter time taken will be a bit less but the important point for us is that it was able to generate a 1024 by 1024 image with only 4 gb of vram and that is happened because we enabled xformers and we enabled medium vram optimizations when starting automatic 1111 so now friends let's try to create the same image using the same seed but now at a lower resolution let's try 768 by 768 and let us see what kind of time it takes to generate this image in the meantime i'm actually recording the time so as you can see uh, the third time it had failed so i'm just going to record the time so it took us what three minutes and 54 seconds So as we generate more images in the other resolutions, I'm going to record the time and I'm going to see how long it takes for the images in each resolution to generate with these optimizations in place. Okay friends, so our generation have ended. So we can see that again it created the same image like last time. That's because we're using the same prompt, we're using the same seed and now we have gone back to the same resolution using the same sampling method. And we can see that this time it took 1 minute and 18 seconds. So let's compare. So previously it had taken 1 minute and 28 seconds. So now it has taken 1 minute and 
18 seconds. So it has given us some advantage in terms of generation time. It's not a lot, but at least I can say that the optimization seems to be working. So now let's try the 512 by 512 resolution. Let's generate the same image at 512 by 512. So friends, uh, the generation is over. So we got back the image we got last time with 512 by 512 resolution. And let's look at the time. So it took 31.18 seconds and last time it took 32.22. So it's a slight um, improvement. So we have a slight improvement. So that is the result of the optimization. So this optimization actually works better uh, the higher resolution you have. And of course, if you have only 4 GB of VRAM, you are not even able to generate a 1024 by 1024 image. But with this optimization, you are actually able to generate image at a higher resolution. So that is the advantage of using the medium VRAM optimization along with uh, Xformers optimization. Now you have to remember it's only a 1025 Ti, which means that you're probably not getting a lot of advantage out of using Xformers, but you're definitely getting a lot of advantage for using the dash dash medium VRAM optimization. So if you have a laptop like me, which is low on VRAM, uh, running on you know laptop GPUs then it is very important that you use this uh, optimization you use this command line argument in order to run automatic Lavin 11 and generate those high resolution images now in the next video I'm going to try one more optimization which I think will improve the generation time and also I'm going to see the various sampling methods that we have and we're going to find out which sampling method gives the fastest result and also gives a better result so i hope you like today's video so if you like today's video please like my video and also please subscribe my channel then it encourages me to do more experiment so that you get a better understanding of how ai image generation works and hopefully improve your workflow so see you in the next video till then goodbye